Hey Red Raiders, what's up? How are y'all doing? I hope everything is okay with you guys. This is Easy, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about how to prepare for your college exams. I know your first midterms are coming up, so I know it can be scary. It's the first time you guys are in college. It's the first time you're having this kind of college exams. And even if it's not your first time, it's also really useful to always have some tips on how to prepare for those exams. So if you want to ace your exams and if you want to see some really cool tips on studying for your college exams, keep on watching. The very first thing I want to tell you guys is that your study guide will be your best friend. And it's because your professor has likely prepared your study guide to be extremely close to what your exam is actually going to be like. In your study guide, it will highlight for you guys exactly what you have to study, what are the topics that are going to be covered in those exams, what are the chapters, if you have a book, um, what were the classes, everything that will be on your exam is probably on your study guide. And I mean it when I say it's your best friend, because when you have your study guide, you can study topic by topic what's actually going to be on the exam and you won't lose time and like brain memory trying to cram a bunch of stuff that is not going to be on your exam. Like, of course you have to understand everything that's being said in class, but trust me, if something is not going to be on your exam, you shouldn't be wasting time with it when you're studying for it. All right, and then my next tip would be kind of take advantage of the open door policy that we have here at Texas Tech and make sure you talk to your professors during office hours. So this one, I know it can be kind of awkward, especially like going into it. You don't know your professor. You don't want just want to like pull up and be like, hey, what's going to be on the exam? And you know, professors are like pretty busy, so you don't want to overwhelm them. But going to professors office hours to really like talk about uh, any homework problems that you have or anything that you're confused on will definitely help you in the future because it helps build the connection between you and the professor and it also clears any questions that you may have that will be on an exam. So another thing, it sort of relates to this video on preparing for exams, but after your exam, if you still have questions about the exam and you get the paper back and there's just some things that maybe you don't agree with or maybe you didn't understand, go to office hours and actually talk with them because sometimes they can give you points back. That, uh, no one talks about it, but sometimes professors give points back if you go back and talk to them about your test. So yeah, there's a little secret in there also. Also, if you're stuck in a problem, you can go to your professor's office hours in Grain Hall, they have the tutoring center where there's a bunch of tutors from a bunch of different like classes from history to statistics to chemistry to physics and biology and all that kind of stuff. They have several tutors on several different um, courses. Tutors are students who got A's in that class before, so they know what to expect and they can help you. Also, some Colleges have their own tutor for classes that they know a lot of people have to take or they are historically considered hard for students. So make sure that you also check those tutors from the specific colleges you're taking your classes in. Hey guys, it's Molly. So my first tip is to not procrastinate. I know this is easier said than done. Trust me. I know guys. But even if you're studying like 10 minutes a day the week before, 30 minutes a day, a couple days before, like that is so much better than cramming the night before or pulling a molly and waking up at 4 a.m. to study the day of. Like, <laughs> sorry guys, I'm a morning person, I know it's bad. But it is not worth cramming. Like it is better just to study, you know, a couple days before, a couple weeks before, not a couple weeks, but like a week before because You'll do so much better when retaining the information and just oh, like just going over it, not memorizing it, just reading it, you know, making sure it makes sense in your brain. Um, so try not to procrastinate. I know you'd rather clean your house, walk your dog, scroll TikTok, do your laundry, anything else but study, but guys, just 
procrastinating it's not worth it at the end of the day and I usually will learn the hard way after the first exam I'll be like dang like I didn't do as good as I wanted to and it's because I studied the night before or the morning of and that's just because I don't want to study and I hate studying but I'm trying to get better at it <laughs> it's taken me three years but try not to procrastinate tip to get ready for an exam would definitely have to be good at SI sessions so a lot of people don't know this um, going into college is that these SI instructors actually um, work with your professors. So they have an idea of what could be on the exams, how it's going to be structured. So getting help from them is go definitely going to help you out a ton. So I definitely recommend checking that out. Okay, so another really, really important rule for when you're studying for exams is to see if your professor can give you access to old exams. This is like, for me, the best way you can study for an exam. Because if you see past examples of exams, you might like have kind of like a knowing of what's going to be on the exam and not even what's going to be on the exam, but how your professor will like actually test you on those subjects. Because when you see past exams, you might see like a pattern of questions, how the professor formulates the questions, how you're supposed to answer those questions. Number two is to be more lenient towards yourself, guys. Um, this is your first exam in this class, so you don't know what the questions are like. You don't know what the teachers like testing, like how they for format the test and stuff. So be more lenient. Maybe you strive to get an A and maybe you get a B. Like it is okay for that. And you can go talk to your teacher after the test, go over the test, review it, ask questions. So just be a little bit more lenient. Um, I think a lot of people are always like, oh, I'm gonna get an A, da da da, and they take the test and like, oh my gosh, I don't know anything. Like, it's okay. Like that is okay. It is your first test in that college class. Like, and then you'll get used to the testing style and the questions they ask. I have, or I had one teacher where a lot of his questions were just like, all of the above, A, B, and C, all of the above. And it's just like, I don't know. And then I second guess myself and that's the whole thing. But it is okay. It's your first exam. It's your first test. So be a little bit more lenient towards yourself. This next tip goes to all of my STEM students out there. Um, I've been through calculus one, calculus two, calculus three, and um, I still have some math classes ahead of me before I graduate. And if there's something I've learned, with those classes is that you should always prioritize your homework. Always do your homework and do not leave those homeworks for when you're like two days away from your exam and you decide to do all of the homework questions that your professor gave you to you. First, because in most classes, homeworks are worth a lot of points. So that's a huge chunk of your grade that should not be ignored. It makes such a huge difference at the end Trust me guys, my average has been saved and my A has been secured both in calculus 1 and 2 because of homeworks. So do your homework and besides getting that grade, when you do your homework, you also is already studying for the exam because your professors will select the questions that they want you to have on your homework. And if your professor has selected those questions, he wants you to practice those, there's a very high chance that those questions will be on your exam. Of course, talk to them, be like, hey, is your homework similar to your exam? But at least you're practicing and you're making sure that you know what's in them, like you know how to solve those problems. It's already going to be a huge help for you when you're studying for your exam. Okay guys, that was it. I really hope you enjoyed the video. I really, really hope it was helpful. Always remember to take a deep breath be calm, your exams are going to be fine, you're going to be okay, and it's all going to work out in the end. If you like it, make sure to like and subscribe to our channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!